Hello and welcome. In this video, we are going to be converting this basic HTML page into its PHP equivalent so that we can start coding in PHP. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first question you might want to ask is, well, why do we want to do this in the first place? And the answer is quite straightforward. There's absolutely nothing wrong with HTML pages, uh, apart from the fact that they are static, okay? We want to be able to pull information from databases and other sources to make our pages uh, richer and more responsive to the people who are viewing our website. And there are many languages we can use to do this. Uh, Node.js, Dino, which is coming to replace it, amongst ASP and loads and loads of others. PHP just happens to be the one that I like, and the technique that we're going to be using for this is actually very similar for people using Node.js or if they're using handlebars, you know, within it, etc., etc. The idea here is that when we do a PHP page, or like I said, any of the other ones, we actually don't start off with a single page in which we build other pages. We actually start off with three pages, okay? And these are those parts that represent the common parts of a website. So for example, when we are looking at our demo website, which is Into the Wild, and this is the base page, we can see there are really three components here. We have the header section at the top, which has got the navigation bar, and the footer system at the bottom. And then this big gap in the middle is where we would fill it with content, and that's kind of the base page. So we have a header, a footer, and the base area. And that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna create the three pages, one for the header, one for the main part, and one for the footer. And one of the reasons for this is that quite often when you are building a website or as a website gets bigger and you need to add more links into it, by having the header and the footer files separate, you can edit those files. And that means that every page on your website which reference these two files can be automatically updated without you having to go through all of your pages to update them. And that just makes life really, really easy. Okay, so how do we do this? We start off with the base page setup that we've done in one of the previous videos, although I've renamed some of the files a bit. And with PHP, we have little tags. Uh, we have a lesson symbol, question mark, and then we do PHP, and then press enter a few times, and then question mark and greater than symbol. And these are the PHP tags. And this is actually the uh, tag that the PHP processor on the web server will actually look for to be able to say, okay, these are my commands, what do I do with them? Now, you can see straight away that this is coming up red and it's kind of like an error on a system. And that is because at the moment, this file is still a HTML file and it needs to be a PHP file for this to make sense. So let's just go ahead and do that. Let's do file save as, and let's just call it base.php. And straight away you can see in Visual Studio Code, gives it a new little icon and the PHP tags go blue. Okay, so we know that, that works fine. And what I always like to add here is the session underscore start command. So this is the command to start cookies or to continue cookies on a website. Without this, you don't have cookies, you don't have web server cookies. So to be clear, this is a web server cookie, not a client side cookie. Uh, what it will do is put an ID on the user's computer, which then references the file on the server. And it's always good to put this in at the start, even if you end up not using the server side cookies, because once it's in there in your base page, all the pages you make from this will have that. And therefore it saves you a big headache later on. So the next thing we're gonna do is to create a link to the header and the footer files. And so, the best place to do this is inside the body of the base page. Now, I always like putting in uh, comments so that I can actually track it and see that things are working correctly. And if you're using Visual Studio Code like me, you can do Control and forward slash to add in a HTML comment. So I like doing end of base. Start of base. Okay, and then in between, I'm gonna put in another 
GHP uh, tag. And I'm going to put in the command for require once and then name of the file, which will be header.php. Notice it is in double quotes. I think you can get away with single quotes, but double quotes tend to be the normal. You can also get away with just require as opposed to require once. Require once does actually uh, create more processing on the server and it just stops you ending up accidentally having two headers on your page. And then we repeat the sort of process again. And so put a little space there. And once again, I'm going to type in comment and end of base. And again, remember that is control one forward slash. And then I'm going to put in the PHP tag. And this time it's going to be require once. And it's going to be footer.php. Don't get some code on at the end. And of course, again, I just want to put in another comment at the bottom that says start of base. And then at the end of the HTML, which actually gets moved in Chrome, but it doesn't matter. Uh, we're just going to put end of HTML and then control S to save it. And that's the basic base page. Then all we need to do is to create the header and footer files. So we go new file and we're going to call uh, one header.php. And all we're going to do in this one is first of all, start on line two. And the only reason for that is just so the HTML sort of stacks up correctly for me. I'm going to put in again a comment, just going to be start of header. And then another comment, end of header. This is all actually HTML, not PHP. And that's fine. Again, I'm just going to save that file and close it. And again, new file, I'm going to call it footer.php. And I'm pretty sure you know exactly what I'm going to do in this file. Control forward slash, start of footer. And end of footer. Again, we save that file, go back to base. Now, because it is a PHP page now, okay, it's got the PHP extension, we can't use live server. So if you right click here and notice it no longer says open with live server because live server cannot deal with PHP. There are other extensions that do do it. I haven't actually uh, spent time configuring them yet. I instead use Laragon. It's in my pen drive system and it's uh, if you don't want to use the pen drive system, that is fine. Uh, it's just the one I recommend you guys use. Uh, but you can also get Laragon from their website, laragon.org download. It is only available for Windows. So if you're on Mac, I'm sure there are plenty of Mac variants of this. I just really like Laragon myself. And you can download it onto your PC and the portable one. In fact, actually, even the full one will work on a pen drive. But the portable one is actually meant for pen drives. And that's one I recommend to use. So we need to make sure that we've actually got Laragon up and running. And one of the important things to know is where this file is. Okay, well, sorry, the document root is. So this is where you have to make sure that you link this correctly. So websites, PHP. Okay, sometimes it'll come up with an error. Now this will bug out my screen, I think. So when you change this here, what it will do is do a user access request and uh, no screen recorders record it. So you just have to believe me on that one. Okay, so once you've got that set, uh, you can close that down and then you can just go to web. And of course it is the base page.php that we want or base.php. So we click on that and we get this lovely empty page. However, what we're interested in here is that when we press F12 to go into the developer's console, I'll just pull this out, we can actually see all of the comments that we made. Notice here, even at the top, there is no PHP. There's none of those PHP um, opening and closing tags. There's none of that require once. Okay, so what we can see is that the page started fine and then 
where it says in the base, we know this is where we had, and I'll just bring it back up. So we can see here, if I it along, we go end of base, which is here, and it goes straight to start of header because this bit here uh, got swapped out by the PHP module with the header file. And then we can see start of header, end of header. Of course, that's the end of header.php. So we end up going back to start of base, which you can see here, end of base. And then we see the next requirement, which is the footer.php, which again, we can see gives us start of footer, end of footer, that file finishes. And that's then when we get end of HTML. So even though it's a completely empty PHP uh, base page in that sense, you can see that it all works perfectly, really for us to start adding our HTML code so that we can work on it later. That is the end of this video. As always, uh, please like, subscribe, ask any questions. This is quite a straightforward one. Is there something that you think I've missed out, something that I should have added? Just let me know in the comments below. I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Zen, signing out.